Well, if it's May on the Wirral, it must be the playoffs. Not quite an annual tradition. The Trammy Rovers history is a catalogue of moments, good and bad, of nights like this. A post-season promise, sometimes delivered, sometimes not. In two of the last three seasons, they benefited, getting through to the final and achieving promotion at Wembley. If your nerves can take it, you could argue that there's no better way. But this time, they're driven on by that sense of injustice, still smarting from the points per game demotion amidst the unique circumstances at the end of last season. Tramier's presence in League Two's rankle all season, exaggerating, if possible, the stakes tonight. A time for big decisions, few bigger than the dismissal of the manager nine days before a playoff semi-final. And now Rovers have to demonstrate that the oldest team in the division is over the hill. Ian Dawes back in caretaker charge, reverting to the formation that worked so well back in the late autumn and ripping up Keith Hill's blueprint. Their opponents have gone under the radar all season. Morecambe, 200 to 1 shots at the beginning of the campaign, rising from 22nd to 4th in the course of 12 months. An extraordinary achievement on one of the smallest wage budgets in the division, and one for which they haven't perhaps picked up the requisite credit. They've won half their games this season, and a first ever promotion to the third tier could be on the cards if they can improve their record in their matches against their fellow playoff hopefuls because those weren't good in the regular season well the two teams are out Tramia in all white with raw blue trim and Morecambe red shirts and black shorts and they line up like this Tramia Murphy in goal who played for Tramia in the League Cup final 21 years ago back four of O'Connor Clark Montvey and Rydalsh midfield diamond of Spearing Morris and Khan and Feeney and up front it's Vaughan and Blackett Taylor on the bench, Nelson Woolery McDonald, Lewis Nugent Lloyd, and Ben Jones for Ian Dawes Tramia Rovers. Morgan, Carl Letherin in goal, Cooney Laval, Knight Percival, and Hendry the back four. Jan Songo, who was sent off when the two sides met earlier this season, anchors the midfield. McAlinden, Will Diggers back from a facial injury, Dia Garaga and Mendes Gomez. And the former Tramia striker Cole Stockton is up front. On the bench, Davis Kenyon Lyons, Leek Smith Pringle Gibson, and Mark Halstead for Derek Adams and Walker. Well, the two sides have swapped round. Tramia fans not too happy about that, with Morecambe having won the toss. And so Tramia will be kicking towards the cop in the first half. And defending the cow shed away to our left-hand side. It's a vibrant atmosphere here at Prenton Park, despite the fact that the crowd is the requisite 20%, only about 3,500, something like that. But they're making the noise for the 16,000 that would be here under normal circumstances circumstances. Darren Drysdale is the referee and we're just about to get underway with Tramia Rovers kicking from left to right in the first leg of this playoff semi-final in League Two. Referee just waiting for the signal from the uh, TV officials to uh, get the game underway. Morecambe have never played third tier football is this going to be their year players before kickoff pause and unite to take the knee gesture applauded by the Tramia supporters well it's been a tumultuous nine days on the Wirral is it a decision that is going to prove to be the right one Keith Hill out Ian Dawes in we're about to find out, will it be Derek Adams, Morecambe, with the plenty of speculation about his future as well, with Bradford having uh, another attempt, we understand, to uh, try and bring him in. Each of the two sides will make it through to Wembley. Trying to get the ball forward early and straight away an illustration of just how skiddy and quick the surface is going to be. It has bucketed it down with rain. Whether in such stark contrast to this part of the world with 24 hours ago, people at Goodison Park could barely see the sun was so bright. But here today, no such problems with that. No hands above the eyes today. It's just 
fingernails being bitten instead, Nicky. No, absolutely, yeah. Well, I mean, the early stages in the game, but you can sense that both sides are feeling each other out. Tranmere have had a lot of possession. I think they are very strong down that left-hand side with Corey Blacker Taylor, with the ability that he has. I'm sure they're going to try and get him on the ball as much as they possibly can. So they will double up on him. I'm sure that Cooney, McAlinden over on that right-hand side, have certainly got a job in their hands this evening. Ball played out to uh, Liam Rydalsh, the uh, left back, who's had three relegations and two promotions in his time with Tranmere. And now the old man in the team, Peter Clark, at the age of 39, the organiser and wily veteran at the heart of the Tranmere defence, the player that didn't miss a single minute of the league campaign. It's a free kick to Tranmere. Clark, one of the players with plenty of playoff experience in the past, although most of them have here at Tranmere because they do tend to be in the playoffs at the end of campaigns in various divisions. Clark taking the free kick, working to his left-hand side for Monfe, and he will bring it forward towards halfway. Doesn't play it forward, just goes square to his right-hand side instead for Clark. And it's played forward now out towards the left-hand touchline. Heads go up for it, flicked on towards Blackett Taylor, driven ball in from him, looking for Vaughan, and put behind for the first corner. I think the Morgan players are claiming that it should be a throw. It went right over the corner flag just about, and uh, indeed out of the ground. Down behind the Johnny King stand over on the far side, which is much the lowest of the four stands here. It is an early Tranmere corner. Monfe's made his way forward. He's inside the six-yard box. Four Tranmere players doing the conga around the penalty spot. All spread away now. Ball in towards Ridehouse, who attacked it. It's half cleared out towards Spearing. And the former Liverpool and Leicester man volleys the ball out towards the left-hand side for Feeney. And then they will work it all the way back for Joe Murphy. But it's a bright start from Tramir here on TalkSport 2. Still nil-nil. It's been a very lively start from Tramir. Every Morecambe player, I mean, they haven't actually got out of their own half. And every single player is just behind the ball. They're letting Tramir keep it at the back, so they have to play that diagonal. And that's worth forward here for Kieran Morris towards the edge of the penalty area. And good covering from the uh, Morecambe back line. Uh, just that stopped him getting into a shooting position. And then O'Connor, caught by Mendes Gomez. The referee said it was a legitimate challenge. It's gone out of play for a goal kick, which will be taken by Carl Letheran for Morecambe. Yeah, well, they've, they've been playing some very, very patient football, Tramia. They're waiting for their opportunity. And as I said, Morecambe are just playing in their own half. They're staying in their positions. They're leaving it to Clark and Monfe to play those diagonal passes. He did actually play a lovely ball into Morris, who got himself turned. A little give and go with O'Connor on this right-hand side. Could have been a foul. Very, very close, but they're on the front foot, trying to ask questions of this back line of Morecambe. Leather with the long clearance, which is uh, flicked on by Stockton, but couldn't find either McAlinden or Mendes Gomez coming in from wide positions either side of him. And he goes through to the goalkeeper, Joe Murphy. I think the one thing you can guarantee today is that Tranmere are going to dominate possession. Uh, if you ha have a look at the possession stats over the course of the season in League 2, Morecambe actually had less of the ball than anybody else, so they won't be phased by the, the start that has been made. Tranmere's possession, on the other hand, in the mid-50s over the course of the season as a whole, which was in the top three in the division. So you would imagine, particularly this being the home leg, they are going to take the game to Morecambe. We'll sit back and be more than happy just to look for the long balls and the counter-attacks, which plays into their game plan. Good run by Rydhouse down the left-hand side. And he's won another corner of the sliding challenge of McAlinden. And Tramir's bright start continues. Nil-nil, well, four and a half. They look very lively. Out, down both flanks. Rydhouse on that left-hand side. A couple of overlapping runs on the occasion. Just on this chance. Tried to get it in the area. But second corner for Tramir. And they're attacking it the same way. A line of four. As if they're waiting for a bus. In comes the uh, ball towards the edge of the six-yard box. Half cleared. Clipped back into the fray by Otis Khan. Bounces inside the area where Mendes Gomez will be able to volley it away. But Morgan can't get out at the moment. And his clearance just drifts over the line. And a play for a foul throw from Jay Spearing. <laughs> but these days, maybe I'm just an old cynic, Mickey. But these days, those never get pulled up. Uh, Spearing uh, taking the throw. Finding Khan. 
Khan inside the centre circle. Neat turn from a, a player who's very versatile. See him at, at right wing back and right back in recent times. We're on the side of a diamond today. As the ball is played down the left-hand side for the runner Blackett Taylor. It was uh, an agricultural challenge on him. And the referee will have a word with Liam McElinden. Darren Drysdale, a referee that uh, doesn't take any prisoners. And uh, McElinden is uh, just being spoken to in no uncertain terms. You can hear the boos and the whistles from the 3,500 Tramier fans who are certainly doing their bit to make the most of the moment and their opportunity to be back at their beloved Prenton Park. Incidentally, you have to go back to 2019 for the last time Tranmere fans saw a victory here at Prenton Park. They had a couple of games back earlier this season when there were fans in and they lost both of those. Wow. They had a bad run before lockdown as well. Free kick right over on the left-hand touchdown. McAlinden didn't get a yellow card for the challenge. It's going to be a right-footed in-swing delivery from Feeney. A little bit too heavy, but Morgan plays at the far post. Couldn't take any chances, and it's headed away by Hendry. And out of play for another corner. Well, it, this is great pressure from Trammy. They're doing everything that's asked of them. They're putting pressure on this back line of Morgan. They're putting the ball into some very decent areas. They've looked a threat from corners. They've obviously worked on them but they've got to make it count. When you're on top, when you find a lot of pressure on your side, you've got to try and make it count and get an early lead if you possibly can. Liam Feeney. Right arm above his head. Preparing to take this corner. Right footed away, swinging towards the penalty spots. A little diving header down into the ground from Peter Clark, And then Feeney races onto it. And he's managed to flick it out of playoff. Mendes Gomez for another corner. Four inside the opening seven and a half minutes for Tramia Rovers. And Feeney preparing to take this one again. Monte stands inside the six-yard box right in front of the goalkeeper. Other players, the likes of Clark, making runs from deep. Spearing is in there. James Vaughan just got the top of his head to it. And it was half clear. Now towards Blackett Taylor on the Tramia left. Trying to find a way through. Left-footed ball curved inside the box. Clark was chasing. Headed back in from Spearing. Shot on the turn from Clark's blocked. Out for Feeney. That one's headed away inside the penalty area. Paul Stockton got his head to it. Might have been Mike Percival actually got his head to it. High ball in again. Clark heads it down. And now Morgan will be able to bring it away. And this is where they can be dangerous. Mendes Gomez down to the left-hand side for Stockton. Stockton playing it forward round O'Connor the right back. And Mendes Gomez battling with Spearing wins the throw but Tramia got their defensive shake back behind the ball so quickly but ricochets and pinball inside the Morgan penalty area and they've been on the ropes in the opening eight minutes they are so fortunate it's still nil nil Morgan they had to defend for their lives and that's exactly what they did an opportunity for Feeney Spearing Peter Clark was getting his head in there I thought there was actually a foul as the corner came into the 18 yard box I think it was Monte who went to ground he didn't really appeal too much for it but that is super Super pressure from Tramir. Hendry with a long throw inside the penalty area, not long enough to be effective. It's headed straight back out to him. And then Morris has done well to get back in between Hendry and the ball. And it runs out of play for a throw that Tramir will take in there. Right back position way down by their own corner flag. There's no overstating the quality of the job that Derek Adams has done at Morgan. No surprise when you have a look at his managerial CV because he was magnificent with both Ross County and Plymouth as well. Uh, but at Morgan, with the, the wage budget that he's had, he has worked miracles. For them to finish fourth is an extraordinary achievement. He won here earlier this season. That is their only win against the other sides who have made it through to the playoffs as well. Kieran Morris unlucky on this near touchline. A lovely bit of skill and a turn with uh, no room for manoeuvre at all. Just trying to do a little croy, but just ran out of room. And it's a throw that will be taken by Hendry on the Morecambe left-hand side. They've come into this game in good form. They've won five of the last six. Further back, 11 out of the last 18. Ball thrown down the line by Hendry and flicked on by Stockton. And straight out of play for another throw that will be taken by Tranmere in their own right back position. Clark will go across to retrieve the ball from in front of uh, some of the TV equipment, some camera boxes and cases down there away to the left hand side behind that corner flag. And he retrieves it for Leo Connor. Irish international loan from Celtic playing it right back for Tranmere tonight, who's hurled it forward. Brought down neatly in the 
the midfield by Morris he's lost possession this time it was Will Dick that got in there played over the top by Mike Percival but too much on that for Stockton and shepherded by Monte over the line and out of play for a goal kick ten and a half minutes gone you're with Talk Sport 2 Jim Proudford and Mickey Gray talking through the action on the Wirral and it's nil-nil excellent start from Tranmere they haven't let up but on a couple of occasions you could just sense now what Morecambe are going to try and do they're just basically sitting in they're going to try and win the ball back they're being very patient they're all organised staying in their positions and when they get their chance to break they get Cole Stockton and Mendes Gomez over on this left hand side they're trying to get him on the ball but brilliant defending well, that a minute ago from Peter Clark, he stood his ground, just played the ball out of play. Everybody got behind the ball again, and that's the way the game seems to be ebb and flowing. Now, the more this goes, the more and more can the lovers you grow into the game. They will create half opportunities, and they've got to try and capitalise on that. But again, atmosphere here in this stadium, fantastic to have fans back in here, and they are getting behind their team. And some the ball thrown forward down the Morecambe right, headed back by Monte. Play for by Feeney. That's a, a heavy pass, a little bit too heavy. And well defended by Lavelle. Just got a little shove in the back uh, for his pains as he shepherded the ball over the line. Now to play for a goal kick that uh, Leatheran will take. He's in uh, no discernible hurry to take it. Why would you be in the face of the pressure that Tranmere have put Morecambe under so far? I mentioned earlier the two uh, games between these two earlier this season very tight closely contested affairs Tramia won at Morecambe with a goal from Kane Woolery in January Morecambe had won here back in October with a penalty from Phillips who then spent the second half of the season on loan at Accrington a Burnley player and uh, Phillips a uh, player that certainly made an impression in his time at Morecambe Derek Adams has used the uh, loan market very well ball's gone out of play for a throw to Tramia which has been taken by Wright Alsh Make his 275th appearance for Rovers today, way in excess of uh, any of his teammates. Monte bringing it forward. Player who's linked with a move to Portsmouth. Uh, back in the last transfer window. It'll be interesting to see whether this ends up being his last game for Tramia Rovers here at Prenton Park. Clark spearing has dropped deep from his deep line midfield position and split the two centre halves. Tramia changing the shape, going back to a 4-4-2 with a diamond in midfield, having played three centre-halves for the, for the last match of the season against Colchester, when it very much was a back five rather than uh, just a back three. Clark heading it back and just getting enough on it to get it past Stockton to find his goalkeeper. And Joe Murphy back on his feet very quickly, bowls it out for Spearing. Spearing to left-hand touch, have a right out. Blackett Taylor making movement ahead of him. Goes back a step for Monte, now to Spearing. Shaven headed veteran in the heart of the uh, Tramia midfield. Four from him, O'Connor in space on the right hand touch line. Feeney continues to run further down the line. Morris has gone back the other way though, finding Spearing. Spearing's ball in, James Vaughan with the header. And he did well to get anything on it. He was uh, well marshaled by a combination of Cooney and Lavelle. But it was a diagonal ball in and he timed his run to perfection. Problem was, by the time he got there with the cross, maybe a yard or so, a little bit too heavy. It was a diving header and the angle was prohibited. Yeah, super ball from Jay Spearing. Very patient football. He's just picking that ball up in the centre circle. He got himself advanced a little bit. He saw the run from Vaughan in between the two centre-halves and Knight Percival and Vell. But you're right, Jim. He just needed that extra half a yard of pace. And just reaching his neck out a little bit too much to guide it towards that Morecambe goal. James Vaughan, a player who was the Premier League's youngest scorer when he uh, netted for Everton back in 2005 at the age of 16, half his life ago now, still banging the goals in. This is actually the second best goal scoring return of his career. 21 for him in an injury hit campaign. Very impressive return. Tramia had that flurry of corners early on. Morecambe have now got there first. Diagaraga stands on the edge of the penalty area. Lavelle's making a run in towards the edge of the six-yard box, got his head to it, Murphy's done really well, turned it from close range, and it's in from Mike Percival, left-footed ball in for the left-hand side of the penalty here from McAlinden, and Mike Percival on the edge of the six-yard box, steered it 
Hit him with his knee. Chubby with all the pressure. Morgan with the lead. Well, I mean, you talk about pressure and obviously trying to capitalise on that. And Tramia have not been able to do it. The first opportunity that Morgan get, they win a corner and they just keep it alive in the 18-yard box. I think it's Mendez Gomez does a bicycle kick. Wonderful save from Joe Murphy to block it out. Comes back into the six-yard area and Mike Percival just basically throws his body at it. Comes off his midriff and just finds its way into the back of the net. The last thing that Tramia needed, the first opportunity for Morecambe. And what happens? They stick it in the back of the net, 1-0. And that is Morecambe all over. Wow. They do it too often for it to be coincidence, for it to be a fluke. That's the game plan, and they do it so effectively. Now, Mike Percival, who was once in the Histon side that beat Leeds in the FA Cup back in the day, scores his first goal for Morecambe. Now, what a time to do it. 15 minutes into this first leg. 1-0 has been enough on both occasions in the two previous matches between these two clubs this season. You sense it's not going to be enough tonight. Lavelle able to bring the ball forward the Scotsman working it over halfway into the feet of Stockton back towards Dio Garaga helped on by him but away goes from O'Connor back through the midfield spearing uh, Vaughan I beg your pardon beaten in the air and Songo back on his feet but holding the small of his back Dio Garaga playing it down towards the Morecambe left hand side here for Hendry five yards outside the box left footed ball swung in nobody was there and it drifts all the way through and out of play for a throw on the Tramia left it is Tramia nil Morecambe one on Talk Sport 2 and these are the thoughts of former England defender Mickey Gray well after a fantastic start from Tramia you could just sense the confidence starting to filter through to these Morecambe players really good play again down the left hand side Hendry put a lovely ball into the 18 yard area just having a look for somebody maybe like Stockton or Mendez Gomez just trying to make that little run but they're starting to commit bodies forward now the first 10 minutes they never moved out of their, of their own half they're now starting to break forward they're counter-attacking filling themselves with a little bit of confidence and that's what goals do for you well in terms of the stats possession 77 percent to Tranmere just 23 to Morecambe well, one shot apiece on target tells you what you need to know here's Blackett Taylor making his way down the left hand side sliding challenge was a good one on him all put out of play Songo covered a lot of ground uh, no shoulder to shoulder with it but it's another Tranmere corner corner number five and they'll be taken over on the left flank Liam Feeney who's uh, got so much experience behind him a uh, career that Saw him finish here, it's uh, the runner-up in the championship with Cardiff only three seasons ago. And he stands right arm above his head, preparing to uh, take this. In it comes uh, deep and headed away by Lavelle. Goes out towards the touchline that uh, Feeney has taken the corner from. And he scampers after it and takes the throw quickly. Another left-footed ball hooks inside the area. Clark! 1-1! <laughs> ball inside the penalty area and it's the 39 year old Peter Clark the Tramier captain with a diving header that was too hot for leather and a handle could only push it into the net and the lead has lasted barely three and a half minutes Tramier won Morgan won what a game this is shaping up to be ah uh, this is what playoff football is all about and boy did they need it and boy did they deserve that equalizing goal for the way they started this game Tramia Rovers they just kept it alive Feeney puts a wonderful ball into the area gets cleared brought back into the area straight away and Peter Clark just held his ground he wanted it more he was brave headed it into that bottom right hand corner he gave Leatherhand no chance he got a little bit of a hand to it but there was too much power on it for that equalizing goal absolutely brilliant start to the game so 19 minutes in and two centre halves on the score sheet. Peter Clark with the goal that ties it up at one apiece. The shot comes in from the edge of the penalty area for Morgan from the kickoff from Stephen Hendry, but comfortably claimed by goalkeeper Joe Murphy. Clark scoring his fifth goal of the season. Has played in four League One playoff campaigns in the past. He won his last one, which was with Huddersfield some nine seasons ago. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, it has been the situation for 20 years, but always worth just pointing out, away goals do not count in these playoff matches. Right out, the left back, 
trying to beat Morgan's right back Cooney can turn it down the line and work it forward and in the end he should smack it out of the ground again over the Johnny King stand for a throw that will be taken very quickly on the tram near left low skidding ball in might find its way through for Vaughan it does but he's offside and it's a free kick which will be taken away to our right hand side it's so clever James Vaughan in the, in the positions that he takes up he just plays in between the two centre halves and he waits for that ball to come into the area he makes his move just a little bit slightly too early this time he finds himself in an offside position but again you know, the wide players or the full backs they don't even think about it they put that ball into the area Vaughan's going to make that move and that's why he scored so many goals this season there is just something about playoff football what a sensational invention it was here's Mendes Gomez right hand side of the penalty area for Morecambe his ball in is cleared will dig right footed cross which Clark can head away another important header in the other penalty area this time and out into that low squat stand on the, the far side of the ground from us there's a throw which will be taken by Ryan Cooney young fullback on loan from Burnley for a second season Got a couple of goals against Manchester United's uh, under-23s in the, the Papa John's earlier in this campaign. His throw inside the area, right out, she's knocked it away, he's turned back in, Stockton, Monte is there with him and it goes out of play for a goal kick. It was a miss-hit shot but it was a, a brilliant pass in the end for Cole Stockton. Uh, Monte stood his ground well and it's a goal kick which will be taken by Tran Mia, who got no kind of form really two wins in the last 11 games only one in the last five matches here and goal scoring has been the problem for them just three in their last seven matches but not playing like a side that have only scored three goals in the last seven games there just seems to be a, a whole lift about the place a renewed vigor the changing of the guard at the helm nine days ago is Blackett Taylor clipping it inside the penalty area it's brought down by Morris Morris turning it across the six yard box Vaughan had wanted it into feet but not there and Morgan will be able to bring it away Monte stepping up from the defensive line dealt with Stockton brilliantly back it comes with Blackett Taylor left hand side of the box and yet another corner is the result what a game of football this is <laughs> 20 minutes gone it has been brilliant One -one. Oh, absolutely fantastic it really is I mean um, Corey Blackett Taylor on that left hand side is having a field day but he's making it work for himself he's getting the ball out of his feet he's doing step overs he's running onto things absolutely outstanding it must be a joy to play with you in his centre forward because he's going to certainly make things happen it must be a joy to play with if you're a centre forward it hasn't happened very often because he's only made three league starts in 2021 he's been out of favour in comes the corner which is headed away Vaughan back into the fray and he came through a crowd of players left and dive to his left to save it and Morgan smack it away upfield. This will not end 1-1. This will not get to half time at 1-1. <laughs> Here's O'Connor playing it forward for Otis Khan in the midfield. Player signed from Mansfield last summer. Back down towards uh, Lee O'Connor, the former Manchester United trainee. He brings it forward just over the halfway line in front of the Tramia dugout. And he indoors, assisted by. Andy Parkinson, another member of the Tranmere side that got to the League Cup final back in 2000. High ball swung in by Rydausch, headed down by Morris. Two Morgan players attacked the same ball, it was half cleared by Songo. And then a foul on Mendes Gomez just allows Morgan the opportunity to get their breath back again on the edge of the box. 23 gone, it's one apiece. And they're going to need it. They're going to need their breath back, Morgan. I mean, it's okay sitting in all of the time in a game, Jim, and trying to catch teams on the counter attack. But it asks so many questions of your back line because that ball is coming into the area every two or three minutes from Tramnia. They're patient football, they're playing it into wide areas. I've already talked about Blacker Taylor on that left-hand side, who's having an absolute field day. Otis Khan is getting involved, he's getting himself turned in between the midfield and the back line. And he's just picking players out. They're playing some wonderful football, there's a great tempo to the game. And as you mentioned there before, entertainment's been fantastic so far. Yeah, the second leg of Blackpool Oxford tomorrow night has got something to live up to without a shadow of a doubt uh, Oxford three down from their home leg they're gonna have to do tomorrow what no side has ever been able to do in playoff history that's overturn a 3-0 
deficit from the home first leg. Not missing anything here. It's a, a, just a little push from Vaughan on Knight Percival after the ball had run over the line and out of play for a Morecambe throw. Uh, Vaughan with a big smile on his face. Knight Percival too. Uh, both have been spoken to by the referee. Knight Percival, I think with justification, wasn't happy uh, that Vaughan had just given him a little shove. Play goes on. Lever and the goalkeeper coming outside his penalty area. Uh, just uh, lobs it uh, back out of play after they try to get Blackett Taylor in behind the, the Morecambe back line. That Blackpool uh, Oxford game. Uh, live from uh, Bloomfield Road tomorrow night. Trevor Sinclair alongside me, Dan Windle in the chair for you. Uh, the EFL show starts at 6 and build up to the game really begins at 7 tomorrow night. It's a 7.45 kickoff. Then on Saturday, Brentford Bournemouth, the second leg of that playoff semi final with uh, the Cherries leading 1 0 from the first. That's 12.30. The build up starting at 11. That's over on Talk Sport. Sunderland Lincoln from 3.30 on TalkSport 2 and Swansea Barnsley from 6.30 and that is over on TalkSport got it all covered for you Saturday the FA Vars final as well Warrington Rylands uh, taking on Binfield Sunday uh, most importantly I suppose uh, for you guys listening to this tonight the second leg of this game Morgan against Tranmere uh, from uh, just up the coast from here with Mark Wilson and Neil Redfern talking through uh, all the action and then of course it's the final day of the Premier League season with the uh, games kicking off at four o'clock and we've got it all covered for you so many stories uh, still to unfold who's gonna finish in the Champions League places who will come third who will come fourth who will come sixth who will come seventh uh, all very pertinent matters 1-1 one, one the scoreline here between Tranmere and Morecambe on uh, uh, not quite a filthy night on the Wirral but it's uh, not one that you want to go out walking in ball out of play for a throw taken by Reinhausch throws it back to Manny Monte he finds his goalkeeper left footed swept down towards the right hand side by Murphy for O'Connor and then O'Connor knocks it square through the midfield for Jay Spearing. Spearing. Khan got out of the way of a, a good ball for Blackett Taylor. Blackett Taylor showing his pace. What an injection of pace out. He's taking on Cooney. Getting to the byline. Cooney, though, made the most of a, a slightly loose touch from uh, the Tranmere man. And he's rolled a brilliant ball down the line. An opportunity for McAlinden to uh, try and make ground down the Morecambe right. He, though, is challenged by Spearing. And Khan's going to be able to pick up possession and bring it away. Work forward again then again by Cooney uh, but Monfe can calm things down at the back for Tranmere and get them going again 28 gone it's 1-1 here on two well, what about that pace from Black and Taylor yeah, you don't have to have ability and although he has he's got two wonderful feet but just get it out your feet and use the pace that you've got this time Cooney got himself back into a nice position as you mentioned Jim there lovely little ball down to McAlinden on the right hand side but the tenacity from the Tranmere players to win it back three players all around McAlinden, winning the ball back for the side, then just slowing the game down again and starting to build up like they are right now. Kieran Morris finding uh, Otis Khan, still possession 75-25 in Tramia's favour. And Liam Feeney's got it. And Feeney, right-footed ball, swept high inside the penalty area, and Leatheran watched it go, but there was a coming together between Vaughan and Lavelle. Now Vaughan claiming that he was shoved over as he was attacking the ball. And yeah, referee Darren Drysdale disagrees. Well, having a look at that situation, Lavelle, he was very clever as a centre-half. He got his body in the way of himself and Vaughan. But I think the cross that came into the box was never going to get anywhere near it, Vaughan there. So I think he was just trying to play it towards the linesman and the referee, waving his arms around, getting the crowd involved, asking for a penalty. But I don't, I don't think it was, in my eyes. Stays 1-1. Both goals in the space of four minutes, and that night Percival giving Morecambe the lead. Cancelled out by Peter Clark, and header from a right house cross four minutes later. Feeney really made his name playing non-league football with uh, Salisbury back in his early 20s, and uh, has had an excellent career on the back of that, more than 500 senior games. It was a milestone that he uh, got to just in the last couple of weeks or so he has the ball again now on his right foot goes back to the edge of the center circle for Clark Clark working it through the center circle for Khan 
then calm down to Sparing, Sparing down to Feeney, midway inside the Morecambe half, on the right-hand touchline, and tries to take on Mendes Gomez, who's had such a good season, Morecambe's player of the year, but such has been the dynamic of this game, Morecambe stood no chance really of being able to get him involved too much, and he hasn't been an influence, not yet anyway. Right house back for Khan. Carl on the left-hand side of the midfield diamond. Uh, a system that uh, it looks as though the Tramia players are all so comfortable with. About a week or so to be uh, back working on it again. It is Ian Dawes' preferred formation. Back at Taylor, cropping up on the right-hand side this time. Just standing a ball in towards the edge of the six-yard box. Too high for Vaughan, but it took an awkward bounce for Cooney, the fullback. And Khan's eyes lit up for a moment. Cooney's done well to get it away down from the corner flag. Morecambe help it further clear towards Stockton. Stockton rolls his man, but used his hand in the process. And it's a free kick, ten yards inside the Morecambe half, which Spearing will look to take for Tramia. Yeah, one. I think there was a little bit of a hand in that there from Stockton. He's just in his own half. He's tried to hold off Monte. Referee blew his whistle, but again, we've got Blacker Taylor now over on this right hand side. Cooney is probably thinking of himself in that right back position for Morgan. Thank goodness for that, because for the first half an hour, he's had him at six of the sevens. Now it's Henry's opportunity to say, Right, okay, can you handle me? And Stephen Hendry, right on cue, is taking on Blackett Taylor now, who gets towards the byline. Hendry deflected the ball inside the area. Knight Percival can head it away at the near post. Dear Garaga uh, linking up with Mendes Gomez. Ford to Stockton. Uh, Dear Garaga leaving it for Hendry, who can whack it away down the left. Mendes Gomez chasing it, and Monte heads it away. Spearing a calming presence. Just put on the ball and then plays it forward for Feeney. Feeney with a right footed ball. Nice shape on it, but nobody attacking the far post area. Ford have made a, a darting run to the near. And he goes out of play for a throw, which will be taken over on the Morecambe right hand side. 32 minutes gone, 15 attempts on goal in the opening 32 minutes. And this just backs up what we've been saying about Morecambe, you know, possession, 77-23 at the moment, but the attempts count, 8-7, pretty equal. Mm. So Morecambe using the ball that they get so effectively. It's a philosophy that obviously works for them, Jim. They just soak up pressure, they obviously enjoy doing that as a group, they like defending. And when they do, they can catch you on the counter-attack. Mendes Gomez, as you mentioned, you know, he's not really got into the game as of yet. He'll still have something to say in this game. There's no doubt about that because he's got wonderful ability. But at the moment, it's Tramia. And I think you can hear the appreciation from the supporters in this stadium from what they've seen in the first 30-odd minutes in this game. More can have a player down injured over on the far side. Uh, Maka Linden, is it, back on his feet? Opportunity for Tramir to bring it forward. Khan is playing into his left hand side for Feeney. Now to right out in the bright yellow boots. Back through the midfield from Feeney to his right hand side. Right footed ball chipped in. Too high for Vaughan, who's been very successfully patrolled by Sam Lavelle, the Morecambe captain. The longest serving player in the starting lineup with more than 150 games behind him for the club sliding in on the right hand touchline O'Connor's done well because he had a lot of ground to make up the ball very quick on this uh, zippy playing surface but he slid in and kept it in uh, to keep Tramia going back it goes from Morris to Khan Khan back behind square for Monte Spearing offers himself as the passing option play four through the midfield instead by Monte and then the uh, boot raised a little bit high by Morris towards Dio Garaga caught him Dio Garaga was ducking in but was always going to be given as a free kick against the Tramia man and it's a free kick which will be taken by Morecambe inside their own half 1-1 one, one, with 11 minutes to go in this first period Tramia four points off the top of the table with 11 games to go but couldn't see it out in those 11 games just seven goals 12 points only the 20th best record in that time so bottom five form over the final quarter of the season coming into this another factor in the, the change at the helm but it's been a, a much improved and a much more attack-minded Tramia display from what we've seen in the opening 35 minutes. One on the score. Blackett Taylor has gone back out of the left. Uh, looks as though the ball had gone out of play for a throw. Plays from both sides stopped. The ball's still on the line and played on. 
Morton sent a crossfield ball from right to left that sails over Mendes Gomez's head. And out for a throw which will be taken on the uh, Tramia right. The Mendes Gomez story, I know we touched on it before the game, it's a, a fascinating one in the the youth systems at Getafe and Atletico Madrid in his uh, hometown before making the move over to Manchester with his family. Played for West Didsbury and Chalton, uh, which was where he was spotted. He was uh, in the Football Academy in Manchester College. Now, player of the season at a League Two club after 15 goals from the left wing. And he's got no end of admirers. I think you, even if Morgan don't go, will be playing football at a higher level next year. I'll still be hoping that that will be with the shrimps though ball played forward now for Tramir Morris chasing it but headed away easily by Hendry Spearing's got it now Clark gives him the instruction to turn Spearing lays it back for Clark again works it across the halfway line for Feeney and then Feeney down to right out on the far touch line Tramir kicking from left to right in there white kit much of which is uh, muddied now Spearing into the feet of Vaughan, 21 goal man, had Knight Percival at his back, laid it back through the midfield for Spearing, now out towards the right Ausch, now to Khan who tries to get the ball in, taking the deflection on his way through and goes out of play for Tramir's seventh corner of this first half. Yeah and he put some wonderful balls into the air, I just wonder if they could maybe mix these corners up a little bit Jim because I'm trying to explain it, it's kind of like a ladder effect, you get four or five players in a line and the Morecambe guys have got to obviously stand around them and say, right, who, who am I picking up? They make runs to the near post, but there's a couple of them that just drifted too, too far to the back stick, I just need a little bit of pace on this one maybe. Well they've got three in the line rather than the four this time, an extra body inside the six yard box, out comes the goalkeeper Leather and punches it away, straight back in by Khan, and then Vaughan off balance, turns his head away. A very thing, difficult chance. Yeah, it's, it's difficult to, to pick up the players because they're all in a straight line, basically from the D at the edge of the 18-yard box. And the Morgan players are maybe looking around thinking, well, which one am I picking up? Because they then all spread. There's a couple go to the near post. There's one comes to the back stick. This time they stood over the goalkeeper. But they keep getting that first ball. They keep it alive in the 18-yard box. This time Vaughan, a little header, couldn't direct it back towards goal. But the more corners they get, the more problems they seem to cause. So it is a, a, a queue of players, that the head of which is on the penalty spot. I suppose the option, a potential option for Morecambe, might be just to get a line of three or four as a, mm. almost like a defensive wall, so that they can't yeah. run around them. I know it's then difficult to defend the space in behind, potentially, uh, because you're, you're facing the wrong way. But there's something that Derek Adams uh, will be assessing. Just a, a variety on the set pieces, of course, with a change at the helm. It will be a, a, a different repertoire, by and large. Ball played for by Clark. And Vaughan going out of the right-hand side of the penalty area here for Tranmere. It's down by the corner flag. Knight Percival is with him. Hands on Vaughan's back. Vaughan's done well to turn and feed Feeney. Feeney can't find his way past the Morgan goal scorer, Knight Percival. And he goes out of play for a throw. It's one apiece. O'Connor into the feet of Spearing, 15 or 20 yards outside the Morgan penalty area. Work back for Khan. Khan's got right out to his left. And the experienced fullback goes back inside his own half of Monfe. Play for by him. Into the feet of Blackett Taylor, the former Aston Villa trainee, checking back onto his right foot. It's level with the edge of the Morgan box. Ball close to the referee, finds Spearing, and he has uh, sliced across it and screwed it. A couple of yards high, a couple of yards wide of uh, Leverance Post. Out of play, goal kick, six to go to half time in this playoff semi final first leg. You'll be talk sport two. It's 1 1 between Tramir and Morgan. Nicky Gray. Yeah, but I mean, Jamie Spearing, he's just had the, you know, that strike from what, 25, 30 yards out, was never really going to threaten Leverance in that Morgan goal. <laughs> But as you were mentioning to me before, Jim, about um, uh, a blacker Taylor only playing a certain amount of games, I think you said three this season, he must have some wonderful forward players because he is certainly on it this evening, there's no doubt about that. Uh, yeah, three league starts in the, in the second half of the season, in 2021, uh, since the turn of the calendar year, he's, uh, he's been out of favour, uh, maybe one or two disciplinary problems uh, off, the, off the field in terms of uh, timekeeping and the like, but he's got it now. Left-hand side of the box. 
Well, pulls it back right out. Oh, oh, lovely shape on that ball in. It dipped awkwardly. Yeah, the goalkeeper Leatherham came out. And the defender was good because it stopped Vaughan getting a run towards the ball. And he was in no position to attack it. In terms of goal scoring opportunities, just gone through a bit of a lull. Pretty much ever since I said it would definitely not be 1 1 at half time. <laughs> um, Morecambe have a corner here though, a long ball play for, and it's come off the back of the retreating Montface head. And uh, out of play for a corner which we take over on the Morecambe right hand side. Only their second of the game, and the first led to their goal. And there's no rush to take this second one either. Jim is there, they're taking their time. And as you mentioned there before, we talked about Tranmere's corners and how many they've had. Morecambe in that second phase stuck the ball in the back of the net. So we know that they've got the quality from these set pieces. Set up a completely different way to what Tranmere do. Wildick with a right footed away swinger. Headed back down by Knight Percival. Easily volley clear by Monfe. And then sent wide by Cooney, whose ball doesn't get there. And Tranmere might be able to exploit a counter-attack they can't because it was a poor ball out from the back from Card. high ball in again towards Stockton good claim Joe Murphy it didn't quite get the opportunity to take the ball at its highest point he was falling backwards but uh, still was a very good piece of goalkeeping he's uh, won a playoff final in the past Murphy back in his Scunthorpe days man who began his career here uh, as a teenager before making the move to West Bromwich Albion as I mentioned earlier was uh, in the Tramia side that played in the League Cup final that uh, lost to Leicester 21 years ago. Peter Clark heading the ball back to Murphy. Bowls it out quickly. Out to Rydhaus on the Tramia left. Play four by him to Spearing. Possession still on the increase for Tramia. Nearly 80% now. But the shot count still by and large pretty level. Calm. Dark head midfielder. Back to right hand side for the bearded Feeney down to O'Connor O'Connor the yard in for the right hand touchline lays it back for Feeney again Via Garaga a midfielder whose good work is invariably done without possession rather than with it just shuffling across and closing down the gaps trying to do that again player that Derek Adams knows so well he had him earlier in his career Ball work down the line for Feeney. Feeney right hand side of the box. Vaughan attacking it. Good goalkeeping. Leatheran. He taking a bit of everything. I think he might have taken Vaughan as well as the ball. Uh, got enough on it. But it was a vicious swinging cross from Feeney. Tramia will come again. Vaughan lies stricken inside the six yard box. Tramia can't get the ball inside the penalty area. Vaughan is now back on his feet. Might have been uh, winded after that. The goalkeeper Leatheran is. And the referee will stop play so that he can receive whatever treatment is necessary. He has given a free kick. He's not just a stop play to make sure that the goalkeeper is all right. He's given Tranmere a free kick for uh, an infringement on Morris. And now referee Drysdale goes across to uh, assess exactly what the situation is with Carl Leatherham. But it was a great cross and decent goalkeeping as well. Good attacking play from Vaughan trying to get on the end of it. Uh, both players giving everything for the cause and uh, both getting hurt in the process no, absolutely fantastic bravery from the goalkeeper Leatheran and you've got Vaughan who you know when that ball comes into the area he's going to just throw everything at it brilliant ball in from Feeney a couple of times Feeney's been over on this right hand side he's kind of overplayed his cross a little bit and they've both gone out of play but this one a lovely little give and go he gets to the byline rips it across that six yard area and Vaughan he just absolutely flew into that and Leatheran, he was very brave, cleared his lines, but again, it's the positions that Tramia have got themselves in. Sometimes you can watch a game in well, the first 45 minutes, which we're watching right now, and you can maybe criticise the balls that have come into the area, the centre forwards have not been given the service, which is why Vaughan's not got himself on the score sheet, but absolutely outstanding from set plays, wide crosses, they've been, they've been first class. A play did actually restart with the drop ball. Uh, the referee put the spray down just to... Uh show where the incident was where play had stopped ball played in now for James Vaughan who all he could do was uh, hook his right foot underneath it to try and keep it alive 
Bounce is on the edge of the penalty area, been knocked away by Cooney. Now Cooney back on his feet, it's done well, and now Morgan might be able to launch a counter-attack again with McAlinden. Good strong running from him to his left-hand side is Mendes Gomez. Now, first real chance for him to try and take it on a corner. Just tried a little reverse ball in for Dia Garaga's run. Didn't quite get the angle right, it was given away. Thrown out quickly by Murphy. That was a horrible ball for Feeney, who wasn't alive to the fact that Cooney was coming in from behind him. Uh, Feeney caught the Morecambe right back, and it's a free kick to the Shrimps. About nine yards, eight, nine yards outside the penalty area, over towards the right-hand side of the box. As we go into first half stoppage time, chance for Morecambe to regain their lead. Two minutes of added time, 1-1 one, one the score. And that all started from... Uh, Ryan Cooney over in the right back position winning the ball back for his team in his own 18 yard box played a lovely little ball up to McAlinden over to the left hand side Mendes Gomez we thought right here we go this is what we've been waiting for being Guaga just a little bit too long for him in comes the free kick that's a good header by Monte beating Knight Percival looks as though it hit the hand of Dia Garaga play goes on officials blindsided low ball in oh. takes a deflection it's in from McAlinden a controversial goal for Morecambe who lead by two goals to one but it certainly looks as though there's a handball from Dia Garaga on the edge of the area in the build up to it but McAlinden is there another free kick another second phase that Tramier couldn't deal with another Morecambe goal and there will be two on up going into half time oh it's the worst time to concede a goal Tramier have been on top so much in this game a silly little foul just on the corner of the edge of the 18 yard box to keep it alive as you mentioned Jim that second phase and Diego Raga just as lively in that 18 yard box yes I think it did make contact with his hand but McAlinden when it comes to him he just plays it towards the goal it's so close to Murphy he can't really do anything he just reacts to it and makes himself as big as he possibly can goes under his body for that second and all important goal just before half time that will hurt Tranmere Liam McAlinden scored in uh, recent wins against Cheltenham and Bradford and has scored to give Morgan the lead 2-1 up in stoppage time at the end of the first half and apart from that inability to defend set pieces which is a bigger part of course it's been an excellent performance from Tramir but Morgan too have hung in there and have stuck to what they're good at and Liam McAlinden in the right place at the right time to knock the ball over the line 2-1 to Morgan the ball is cleared by Lavelle and uh, out for a throw which Tramir will take over on the, the far touch line the left the two minutes of uh, stoppage time which of course is a minimum has elapsed a few seconds to be added on for the celebration in the immediate aftermath of the goal Vaughan trying to make life difficult for Cooney the ball is played forward and the boos are for the officials at half time for not spotting the handball from Dia Garaga very easy from our lofty vantage point to see it but I'm sure that Darren Drysdale's view would have been completely unsighted because he had so many players between him and the ball as it was worked in quickly but players from both sides make their way off the field what a hugely entertaining 45 minutes that was magnificent advert for playoff football and at this level as well at the break it is Tramia 1 Morecambe 2 while the second leg of this it takes place Sunday lunchtime you can hear it here on Talk Sport 2 and which of the two sides will have gone an advantage the next 45 minutes will tell us Morecambe get us underway red shirts black shorts kicking from left to right towards the cop uh, there is a, a little bit of a breeze about and that first long ball forward from Songo held up in it and it's in Tramia's favour the wind at their backs in this second half and they're in possession now with Feeney who has absolutely drilled that a black at Taylor very difficult one for him to control and he goes out of play for a throw let me remind you of the uh, two teams Tramia and Murphy in goal O'Connor Clark Monte and Rydhouch and then a midfield diamond of Spearing Morrison Khan and Feeney and Vaughan and Blackett Taylor the front two Blackett Taylor drifting out into a, a wider position Vaughan uh, by and large playing through the middle Morgan Leather in goal Cooney Lavelle Mike Percival and Hendry Songo McAlinden Wildig Dear Garaga and Mendes Gomez and Stockton and Khan has possession 
battling away. Ty Grisham, the challenge is done well. It's a good ball out towards O'Connor. Inside Morecambe territory. Tramia completely dominant in terms of possession inside the first 45 minutes. Spearing has it, and he's gone back inside his own half for Peter Clark, the scorer of the Tranmere goal, which was an equaliser. 67th goal of his career, which didn't matter for a centre half. Back he goes for O'Connor to Spearing. Spearing is 10 yards inside Morecambe territory. Played it forward towards Feeney. Oh. Feeney has played a magnificent little reverse ball on the turn out towards the right hand side of the penalty area. He split two Morecambe players. Knight Percival, though, did win it in the end. He knocks it long, looking for Stockton, the dark haired, thick set striker. But Tramir will bring it away and Spearing hangs his head after what he thought was a poor ball but it, it just held up in the wind and it will be played forward down the line by Blackett Taylor. Too much on that for Rydalsh and it goes out of play for a goal kick which will be taken by uh, Kyle Leather and his uh, Tramia 1, Morecambe 2 and you're with Talk Sport 2. Mickey Gray. Well that wind must be swirling down there because when Spearing played that ball it actually looked as if it was just going to run out of play but it held up to give um, Blackett Taylor the opportunity on the left hand side to play Rydalard down the left just had a little bit too much on it he didn't really challenge or do anything to try and keep it in play but it's pretty much what we saw in the first 45 I don't think you're going to see too many chances from this Morecambe setup unless it's on the counter play forward now towards Mendes Gomez who is uh, battling and losing that battle against Liam Rydalsh and it's uh, throw which will be taken on the Tramia left hand side Rydalsh was sent off in the first minute of the playoff final in the National League in Tramia's victory against Boreham Wood three years ago they won that playoff final they won the playoff final the following year as well against Newport County and they could end up playing Newport again in the final of this one but work to do if that's to be the case Newport 2-0 up against Forest Green from the first leg of their semi-final but Tramia losing in this one and making a mistake here it was Monfe passed it straight out towards Mendes Gomez Mendes Gomez tries to get back to his feet Monfe has uh, recovered and I thought won the throw it looked as though it had taken a touch off Mendes Gomez but it's been given a Morecambe throw which will be taken on this near touchline in front of us by Ryan Cooney midway inside the Tramia half 2-1 to Morecambe with goals from Wright Percival on 15 and McAlinden in first half stoppage time after Peter Clark had equalised for Tramia. Long throw inside the area from Cooney, headed away by Rydalsh, header from Songo to his left hand side, brought down here on the left hand side of the penalty area and chipped in by Hendry. And Hendry's hurt himself as the ball is uh, headed out of play on the far touchline from his cross and he just went down on his knees on the dead ball line picks himself up and walks away very gingerly and is uh, going to need some treatment I think as he, he did his best to get back on his feet made six or seven pain-stricken steps and is uh, now down lying on his back and in need of treatment yeah, he's just holding on to his ankle, Jimmy. I mean, he worked it really well over to that left-hand side. And after Henry, I mean, there was nobody around him. He's put the ball into the box. And I don't know whether he's he's kicked his own ankle or his ankle's got caught in the in the turf. But he got himself back to his feet. And then he's went straight back down again. I think they're going to get the uh, the physios running onto the field. They are actually now. I mean, you can hear the Tramia supporters. They're not happy about this because they basically want to get on with it. But he certainly looks as if he's got a problem over on that left-hand side. Now, I'm a fine one to talk in terms of athletic ability, but can I suggest that even the physio is time-wasting? <laughs> <laughs> the speed at which he's making his way from his near touchline over on the far side. He's not, of course, because the time is going to be added on anyway. He'll, not, he'll not be winning any father-son sprint races, is that what you're saying? <laughs> uh, him and me both. Uh, Hendry is, uh, might not be winning any for the rest of the day either, unfortunately. He's sitting up again now, and he's uh, just... Uh, receiving any treatment that uh, is being administered to that ankle. We can't see over on the far touch zone because the physio is between us and Hendry. Uh, just having a look at, at Morecambe's bench. And they've got Liam Gibson, who will be the natural replacement. He's uh, a left-back sign from Newcastle, who's uh, been out with a, a problem of his own recently. He's got a hamstring strain, but he's recovered sufficiently to be back involved in the 18 today. Uh, but Hendry is back on his feet. And we should be able to continue, I would think. He's going to have to leave the field after receiving the treatment and uh, be waved back on. But it's uh, quite a substantial stoppage. 
And the time will be added on play. He's going to resume with a throw, which will be taken by Morecambe over on the far touchline. Six minutes gone in the second half, although we've probably only seen about three and a half minutes worth of action. It is 2-1 to the Shrimps. And a throw that is uh, taken and worked into the feet of Mendes Gomez and it's uh, gone out of play for what's been given as a goal kick although the, the Morgan players thought that it should have been a corner. There's a goal kick, Murphy will take it. Um, Hendry's been given permission to come back on and he does now make his way back on. Tramley take the goal kick, take it short for Clark. Clark fall through the midfield for Jay Spearing. Uh, Spearing goes back for Clark again. Clark bringing it towards the, the edge of the centre circle. It's a lovely long diagonal ball. Khan chasing after it, but it just raced away from him off the zippy surface and he couldn't flick it away from Cooney. Uh, put a perceptive ball inside the penalty area. Out of play. Goal kick will be taken by Kyle Leatheran, oh. who will spot the ball down. But the boos and whistles tell you. I'm sure you will have gathered that he's gone down injured again, Hendry, and his race may well be run here. There is uh, plenty of animation on the, the Morgan bench. And Gibson, the, the blonde-haired Geordie, is the man that's going to come on to replace him. So Gibson, for Hendry, the change that will be made. Yeah, he's obviously tried to play on Hendry. He wants to try and give everything to his team. But you know, as I mentioned, there was maybe a couple of things that happened. He maybe clipped his own ankle with his left foot, but... It's probably a little bit worse now. He's probably got his ankle caught in the ground when he put that cross into the area. So he can't continue. And they're going to make that change now. This might upset a little bit of the system that Morecambe are playing. But Gibson will just fill in in that left-back spot. But while he's still a little bit cold, let's say, you've got to put a little bit of pressure on him. Get that ball worked over onto that right-hand side. As we mentioned before, the wind is swirling a little bit. I would even switch to wide players. I'd put Blacker Taylor over there for a couple of minutes and just ask a few questions of him. Well, not ideal circumstances for a player who's just come back from a hamstring injury to come on for someone injured when he hasn't gone out and done a strenuous warm-up mm, himself absolutely. on a cold day. Um, Gibson, I'm sure, will be managing his introduction to the game as uh, best he can here's Songo Songo was caught there it was a, a poor challenge from Spearing and it might be the first yellow card of the game the Spearing acknowledging straight away uh, that he caught his man and he is going to be spoken to here by referee Drysdale and it is a yellow card for Jay Spearing yeah, a bit of a nasty one there from Jay Spearing I mean the game's been played in um, good spirits I think we had one coming together in the first 45 which could have been the first yellow card, but Darren Drysdale's refereed this game excellent so far. The flow of it's been wonderful. He's let players just continue if people have gone to ground, but he's probably one step too far there from Spearing. So Spearing in the book, now it's a free kick which will be taken inside the centre circle. And Wildig standing over it, clips it right-footed straight towards goal, and he, he misjudged the wind. Well, that was like a, a goal for standing on the tee, not aware that the the wind was behind him and he's hit a five iron when he perhaps needed an eight and it's gone straight out of play for a goal kick Clark playing it forward one straight back again in the midfield by Dia Garaga now Songo played forward by Gibson rifled it straight into the the path of Stockton Tramir will be able to bring it away Morris is put under pressure by Dia Garaga a player who's got plenty of playoff experience in the past with Brentford and over on the right-hand touchline, Tramir will try and bring it away and then win a free kick as Clark is fouled by Stockton, his former teammate. They're, they're making player. mistakes, Jim, sorry. They're making mistakes, Tramir, here in the second 45 minutes, whereas in the first half, they were controlling the passing. Clark's given the ball away on two occasions. Monte has given the ball away just on the edge of his 18-yard box. They've got to be careful, just be more crisp with that passing. I know we've touched on the weather and the wind starts to swirl around a little bit, but just keep it on the surface and be patient and wait for your opportunities. So an opportunity now for Tramir to bring it forward with O'Connor. O'Connor to Morris. Little layoff towards Feeney. Feeney clipping it in for Vaughan. Header back into the uh, edge of the six-yard box. Blackett Taylor trying to make something happen. And Knight Percival was there to hook it away with the head of Gibson. And it goes out of play for a Tramir throw. An intelligent play from Vaughan. The cross was in for him. He knew that he wasn't going to be able to get the purchase he needed for a direct attempt, to, uh, direct attempt on goal. So just trying to play it across the edge of the six-yard box instead. Ball work back from Rydausch. 
to halfway line for Montpellier. Now inside the center circle, Clark. One stop further down the line for the right back, O'Connor. And O'Connor bringing it forward into Morecambe territory. Feeney's got it now. Feeney working it back for Monte. 75-25 uh, the overall possession in this second half. Actually, Morecambe have seen more of the ball than at any other stage. They've uh, had nearly a third of it in the opening 10 minutes of this second half. A half in which neither side have uh, been able to muster an attempt so far after a multitude of them in the first half. So now as the ball is played down towards Otis Khan, it just rolled away underneath his foot and goes out of play for a throw which will be taken by Morecambe's right back Ryan Cooney. It's 2-1 to Morecambe. At Prendon Park with 11 gone second half on TalkSport 2. Yeah, well the players that we talked about in the first 45 minutes are not really getting themselves on the ball from a Tranmere perspective. Uh, Blacker Taylor, who was very lively in that first 45 minutes, he's not had the opportunity really to run at the full backs and that's because they just keep giving the ball away in the wrong areas and in this second 45 minutes you can see Morgan are a lot closer to players. They're getting their foot in, they're waiting for their opportunity. And apart from a couple of little sloppy you know, set pieces that they've tried to put in the area, they've been the better side. Gibson gets it away, Morecambe able to bring it forward, it's an excellent through ball which was just cut out from Monte, but fantastic run from Wildig and almost a perfect ball to find him, it didn't miss him by much. Morgan pick it up in a deeper position in the midfield, McAlinden, not such a good attempt to find Wildig that time, and he's just played straight down the right hand side of the box for goalkeeper Joe Murphy. Murphy out of Ridehouse, 12 on second half, 2-1 to Morecambe here on Talk Sport 2. In this seventh against fourth place semi-final, the lower ranked team have gone through in nine of the last 12 seasons. So three quarters of the time over the last dozen years. The side that only just got in the playoffs beat the side that only just missed automatic promotion. That would favour Tranmere. Uh, but it's Morecambe that lead the away leg at the moment. Tranmere did win at Morecambe earlier this season. And if they can uh, repeat that and this one stays this way, we go to extra time. Just a little conch tot on the technical area as the ball has gone out of play for what has now rightly been given as a Morecambe throw. It wasn't originally. Derek Adams was uh, in the, the ear, let's say, of fourth official Ben Toner. Uh, just to uh, complain about the original decision, it has been overruled. Yeah, things just starting to go against Tranmere now. It was the right decision. You can sense a little bit of frustration. Blacker Taylor. And now you've got Cooney, who's very, very tight to him. In the first half, he was letting him get turned. He was able to run at him in a 1v1 situation. Now when the ball goes into his feet, he's so close to him. He's closing him down. He's not letting him get turned. And you can sense just a little bit of frustration in the supporters as well because of what they saw in the first 45 minutes. They, what they expect the same. But it was so hard to keep that tempo up. It would have been absolutely shattered, these players. Well, in that first half, 18 attempts in the first 45 minutes and none so far in this second half at either end we have had lengthy stoppages but we've probably seen about 10 minutes of playing action so far it's a little back header that uh, evades Ooh. Vaughan who carried on running towards it uh, Leatherin had got there and had the ball in his hands Vaughan continued his run there was contact between the two players very minimal contact it has to be said but Vaughan just maybe sowing the seed in the mind of goalkeeper Leatherham doing what he can James Vaughan for the Premier League player with uh, Everton and Norwich helped on by Dia Garaga in the midfield and Mendes Gomez goes down and spearing unceremoniously waves him up so uh, back on his feet now Mendes Gomez Tramier in possession towards the edge of the penalty area opportunity for Blackett Taylor to deliver and he just kept it in stopped it going out of play for a goal kick and all he could do was hook his foot underneath it and, and hope wasn't the best ball in better ball in from Feeney Vaughan attacks it coming around the back of Leatherham who got the last touch on that it was the keeper and it's a Tramier corner there first of the second half yeah well now he's you can sense it now he's got the crowd involved Blacker Taylor has gone over to that right hand side to put a little bit of pressure on Liam Gibson and why not you know he's still going to be a little bit cold in this game but they've got to get the ball out to him on that right hand side and let him get the opportunity to get in those 1v1 situations so five Tramia players inside the Morecambe penalty area 
and get a line of three attacking it. Swung in for Clark! Oh. What a brilliant piece of defending! There's a header that was going towards the bottom left hand corner, and Dia Garaga stuck out a left foot, falling backwards just to flick it up over the bar and away for another corner. Absolutely. That's a goal saving challenge. Brilliant, brilliant defending from Dia Garaga there. Wonderful ball into the box. Clark got away from his mark. It was going into the bottom corner, and he just had to get anything on it, and he did so. Six in the box to attack this one. In from Feeney, headed down again from Clark. But why? Oh. Well, we've been waiting for that opportunity in this second 45 minutes, Jim. And this came from Tranmere. They did exactly the same with the set pieces. A line of four players. They all did their own little movements. Peter Clark gets on the end of it. And Dia Garaga, absolutely outstanding. Just stretched out a left foot. It was going into the back of the net, and it just scooped it over the top of that crossbar, searching for that equalising goal. But that's what they need. They need a bit of momentum now, Tranmere. Welcome to listeners from TalkSport, joining us on TalkSport 2 for live coverage of Tranmere against Morecambe. Those are the thoughts of former England defender Mickey Gray alongside me, Jim Brownford. Morecambe leading by two goals to one in the away leg and on the front foot here with Dia Garaga, who's just cleared one off the line from a Peter Clark header. And he's played it down towards Cooney, who's had an assured game at right back until that moment, which he's just sliced across straight out of play. Hugely entertaining first 45 minutes. Nat Knight Percival putting Morecambe ahead against the run of play on 15 from their first set piece. Peter Clark, the veteran campaigner at the heart of the Tramia defence, equalising with a diving header four minutes later before Liam McAlinden gave, Tram gave uh, Morecambe the lead, I beg your pardon, in first half stoppage zone. It looked as though it might have been a handball by Dia Garaga in the build up to it. Ball coming off his torso onto his arm. Play continued. Morecambe scored and they lead by two goals to one but it's been a great game Mickey. Absolutely. Thoroughly enjoyed it so far. End to end. Brilliant first 45 minutes but you can see the tactics are starting to work now in the second 45 minutes. Morecambe are just waiting for their opportunities. A lot more mistakes from Tramir in the second 45 minutes. Giving the ball away in silly little positions and that gives Morecambe the chance to break forward and give their forward players the opportunities. Jay Spearing has it now, Vaughan making a run ahead of him. Spearing bringing it into Morecambe territory, goes back towards Khan. If you want to continue to listen to the game, you can download the app, listen online on your DAB radio, or ask your smart speaker to play TalkSport 2. And for more League 2 playoff action, just join us over on TalkSport 2 via the app or DAB+. It is Tramia 1, Morecambe 2, with 64 gone. There's Rydhouse, plays the ball to Spearing, Spearing to Khan, and Khan six yards aside, the Morecambe half, down towards Feeney, Feeney to Rydhouse, back inside his own half for Monte, this is the 10th playoff campaign Tramir have had in their history at four different levels as well, they've never reached a final when they've lost the first leg, work to do here in the final quarter of this first leg. Here's Gibson, the substitute left back, and he's defended that well, clearing it into Vaughan, and out of play from Morecambe throw, about 10 yards from their own corner flag. About 20 minutes uh, played in this second period, and Morecambe have given a better account of themselves in the second half, of almost, we talked about the, the wind increasing, but Morecambe have almost let Tramir Storm blow itself out. Yeah. Absolutely right, Jim. I think, you know, they've been very patient in the way that they've played, the build-up play. When they get the opportunity, because of Tranmere are obviously chasing down this equalising goal, they're leaving some gaps now. And then it gives people like Mendes Gomez and Stockton the opportunity to get in behind Tranmere. although we're still waiting for that one real opportunity from Morecambe in this second 45 minutes. The best chance has come from Tranmere. Could have been the equalising goal, but for that, Dean Garner opportunity just clearing it over the line absolutely fantastic but they've got to stay patient keep playing the football wait for their opportunities because they will come they'll be tired legs out there they know what this means to each side and the chances will be there can't playing a one-two with spearing a few fans are a little bit frustrated but Tramia not more animated, showing more pace in attack. They came out of so quick out the blocks in the, the opening 10 minutes of the game, forcing a flurry of corners. Haven't really been able to replicate that tempo since. Feeney's played it down the line, and he's waiting for the return ball. Swung in left footed instead. Vaughan was in there, poised to attack it. Like Percival heads it away. Gibson volleys it clear from his own dead ball line. Brought back down then on the right-hand side of the midfield from Spearing. Right-footed ball played in, hits Diagaraga. 
Can Ball shouts one wag in the crowd in front of us. <laughs> it wasn't. It was for the goal. But it goes out of play for a throw which will be taken on the tram here. Right. 20 gone second half. 2-1 to Morgan. Right footed ball swung in with pace and passed everybody from spearing. Out of play for a goal kick. Well, I mean, the system that tram here played has not changed. They're still trying to play the ball around, which they did for the first 45 minutes. But Blacker Taylor. He's, he's shifted over to the right-hand side on a couple of occasions. He's now back on the left-hand side. Vaughan's got to be careful. He's, he's had a couple of little kick-throughs. One on the goalkeeper, Leatherhand, and then one on Gibson as he was just trying to clear his lines. And he's followed through with his right foot. And I'm sure if Darren Drysdale just keeps having a little look at that, he's going to have a word in Vaughan's ear just to say, look, I know what you're up to. He was a wily old fox. He's been very experienced in this game, but you still have to be careful. Ball is cleared by Rydalsh and returned firstly by Songo and then further by Maka Linden Diagaraga's in strongly knocked away though by O'Connor over the halfway line and returned with a little bit of interest by Lavelle brought down by Stockton on the turn the man who played 150 games for Tramia passing it to a white shirt out of habit but back it comes again towards the edge of the box and it's Mendes Gomez he's left one defender sprawling he's pulled it back Diagaraga trying to turn inside the penalty area and eventually Clark can get it away back on his feet looks as though he might have been hurt but he's uh, okay Tramir get it forward Vaughan sliding in Lavelle got it past him and it goes out of play for a goal kick which Murphy will take it's fair to say that this playoff semi-final first leg has gone better than Morecambe's last one which was against Dagenham and Redbridge and they got beat 6-0 they did win the second leg 2-1 but 7-2 defeat on aggregate that's their only previous league playoff campaign which uh, was 11 years ago they did beat Exeter in the playoff final and non-league level but what a job Derek Adams has done equaling the best ever finish that the Shrimps have had in their 100 year plus history the fourth in the fourth tier Spearing playing it forward knocked away here by Lavelle and the spearing cushions are headed down to the left hand touch off a right out right out to Khan Khan diminutive bustling flicks it through the midfield but can't find a teammate Maka Linden whose score of the goal that at the moment is the winner laying it back for Songo and Songo clatters it forward and it comes off the perspex of the enclosures down the way to our right hand side at the foot of this near stand and goes out of play throw taken quickly Back for Feeney. Feeney with a long diagonal looking for Blackett Taylor. That's the pass of the match. Blackett Taylor inside the box. Look for Morris. And it was uh, knocked away by Gibson. What a ball though from Feeney. Perfect delivery. Blackett Taylor has it again now. More routine pass to find it from O'Connor. De Garaga can knock that one away. Peter Clark's first to the loose ball for Tranmere, who are 20 yards, 30 yards now inside Morecambe territory. Feeney again to within 10 yards of the edge of the penalty area to his left is Khan Khan hands out stretch wanted options wanted better movement Feeney not such a good boy he's played the pass of the game and then his worst pass of the evening in the space of about 30 seconds what they did great Tramory in the first half they, they got the ball wide really early and they made those 2v1 situations now they've just played Phoenix just played a great ball over to the right hand side and just had a little half opportunity just in front of us then but I think they're trying to play through the middle of Morecambe now well there's so many bodies in there and they're so disciplined it's very very hard for them to break them down Morecambe pick the ball up they get themselves turned and then they break forward themselves go back to tight Blacker Taylor Morris over on that right hand side get the ball out to them get your full backs push forward and make those 2v1 situations because that's where you're going to break Morecambe down if you try and play through the middle of them they're rubbing their hands together saying thank you very much we'll win the ball back from you we'll just keep clearing our lines and we'll take a 2-1 deficit to our place well Tramir are going to make changes uh, a double change at this juncture by the look of it Danny Lloyd's coming on uh, Kane Woolery is stripped and ready for action on the bench and they're not going to bring him on yet, maybe not. Danny Lloyd first on and Feeney comes off. In fact, it's going to be a, a triple change, is it? Second change, we'll see Woolery for Blackett Taylor. So Feeney and Blackett Taylor off, Woolery and Lloyd on. And Paul Lewis 
will also be introduced. So that's three of the five made. You could only make them in three separate intervals within the playing time of the game. So a triple change. Paul Lewis, former Cambridge man, combative in the midfield, 11 yellows and a red this season. And he's on. Danny Lloyd, who can play as a winger, he can play at the, the point of the, the midfield diamond. And he will be a, an interesting option, Kane Woolery, a striker. Woolery's form dropped off when Vaughan was out through injury. They've got a very good combination, those two. But Morecambe on the front foot here, and they have what is their first corner of the second half. Well, Woolery, a lot of assists this season as well. He'll be looking to try and make some opportunities for Vaughan if he gets the chance just to get into those dangerous areas. But they've obviously played the cards first, Tramier here, trying to get themselves back into this football match. The ball has actually gone the other side of the corner flag. It is going to be a throw. Cooney launching inside the box, Monte heads it away, diving header back out towards Cooney, he's got five to try and pick out in the middle, right footed ball chipped in towards the edge of the six yard box, excellent defensive header, spearing will scamper after it, Gibson's there first, watches it over the line, and out of play for a throw that'll be taken on the Morecambe left, 18 minutes to go, so 80% of the way through the game, Tramia 1, Morecambe 2 here on TalkSport 2, as it's been since first half stoppage time. Uh, Woolery is the man that scored the winner for Tranmere at Morecambe back in January. He also scored twice against Tranmere in the National League playoff final in 2017 when he was at Forest Green. Ball headed for towards the edge of the box. The, the wind's still swirling around and it's got rain in the air as well now. An increasingly mucky night here. Monte bringing towards the edge of the D. Certainly the floodlights doing their bit now play four towards Paul Lewis first contribution from Lewis turning it in the midfield and playing it wide out towards Clark Clark four towards halfway still tramming it completely dominating possession still they've got the monopoly on attempts in this second half but it is only two and that's the Morgan's real credit Lloyd nice turn from him left hand side of the midfield Woolery making a run inside for him right house making a run down the line that's the pass that was played and then right house coming across and there's just a collision there with Cooney Cooney stayed down hurt and right house tripped over him as he made his way towards the touchline well right house might be in trouble here because Cooney stayed down on the ground and Danny Drysdale just come across there. I mean, he's having a word with the players. It doesn't look like he's going to put his hand in his pocket, but he's holding on to his face, Cooney. So I don't know if there's contact as he's gone to ground. Cooney thinks he was done there. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, and you, you'd have to say it looked avoidable from right out. He was coming across towards the touchline to pick up the ball. The contact was made. Cooney lying on the ground. He's holding the right-hand side of his face. I couldn't see where the contact was made. I don't know whether Cooney's making more of it. But he certainly thinks that Rydhouse has tried to hurt him. Play continues with a throw. There was no foul on Cooney. Here's Lloyd. Lloyd playing it back down the right-hand side of the midfield. Trammy trying to get the bodies forward towards the edge of the penalty area. It's played by Lewis. Recently arrived substitute down towards the left hand side of the box for Woolery right footed ball in from him headed away by Songo out as far as Spearing Spearing has got Ryan House to his left Ryan House has got Woolery to his left played in towards Kane Woolery beating the first man can't beat McAlinden but they do have a corner tram here and the noise level and the intensity of the support goes up again decibels on the rise as Tramia try and get themselves on the front foot corner count up in the double figures Danny Lloyd who scored two goals in his two games against Morgan taking this corner swung in very deep headed back oh. across the face of goal excellent save from Leatheran to deny Monte and then coming in at the far post Lewis can't work the angle it's out of play for a goal kick. ah brilliant wonderful corner again Monte just tried to head it back in towards the, uh, the far corner 
and then you're just thinking to yourself, you know, the goalkeeper's made a touch on at Murphy, just let it go out of play, because it was very difficult to head that back in towards the six-yard area. It was so high, but that's what they've got to do a lot more of now, Trammy. They've got to put a little bit of pressure on this back line of Morecambe, because the, the crowd are behind them, they're urging them on, but they need that little bit of quality, that final bit of quality, just to get themselves back into it. Be patient. I think Morecambe are going to make the first change as well, Jim, now. Yeah, Brad Lyons is the uh, the player that is uh, coming on, and Liam McAlinden is the man who will slowly make way down towards this near touchline. So Lyons, the player, left out of the starting lineup from the last game. He's on loan from Blackburn, a player who has uh, played most of his football in Northern Ireland. He was uh, on the books of Cole Rain. Monfe heading the ball away, headed back by Knight Percival. Woolery's touch a little bit heavy, Lyons is involved in the action straight away, but it was a block challenge between the two players, and Woolery's emerged with possession, and then nearly ran into Stockton, and straight down a blind alley, Stockton ends up on his back, smacks the ground in frustration, he's quickly back on his feet, it wasn't making out that he was hurt, just lost his balance, here's Spearing, Spearing, wanting options to present themselves, he's found Woolery, Woolery doing most of his work coming in off the left-hand touchline at the moment, finding Spearing again, Morecambe so well drilled as Mickey's been saying just keeping the tight regimented shape the five in the midfield behind the ball shuffling across making the gap small and dealing with Tramir's attacking prowess much better in this second half and now with a lovely turn from Stockton who's beaten Monfe might be able to break forward here Stockton finding Dia Garaga he under hit the pass he should have found him didn't find him and he was knocked away by Monfe who recovered well and then Woolery is fouled and Cooney has uh, given the free kick away Still feel that there might be more goals in this yet. 12 to go, and Morecambe lead by two goals to one. Completely agree with you, Jim. Wonderful again, sent forward play from Stockton there. Holding the ball up. Just needed that little burst of pace, but I don't think he has, and it gives Monfe the opportunity to recover the mistake that he made. But again, you know, it's Morecambe who are just picking up the ball. They know that Tramier have made these changes. And they're getting the ball into decent areas, but the quality's not there now. The quality's got to be better in that final third. Morecambe are just soaking up the pressure. They're not rushing anything. Getting the chance when they get that ball up to Stockton. I have to say, a lot of credit has to go to him. He's been up there on his own. Sole centre forward. Ran himself into the ground. His hold-up play, when it has gone up to him, has been absolutely first class. He just needed a little bit more from McAlinden when he was on the field. Mendes Gomez over on that left-hand side. Showed us some spells of greatness you know with a little great bit of ability in the 18 yard box but other than that you've got to grow into the game we're running out of time uh, it's a free kick for an offside here against Stockton uh, there was a, a free kick prior to that at the other end for which James Vaughan got a yellow card you talked about the fact that he was yeah. uh, just chasing everything and maybe leaving something on a couple of players while well, he caught the substitute Gibson who tried to clear the ball down the line and the referee has booked him for persistent infringement so Vaughan in the book he's the second at Tranmere player caution and they're going to make another change and it's the England international Dave Nugent on loan from Preston played in a championship playoff final 16 years ago in his first spell with North End and he's going to come on here for Vaughan they'll be pleased they got 79 minutes out of Vaughan and they'll be hoping that they can get at least that out of him in the second leg it's much more than uh, he's been able to muster since he had that knee injury so Vaughan off and Dave Nugent on the change being made with uh, just over 10 minutes to go straight swap up front Dave Nugent the man who scored 171 goals in his career but only three of those in the last 75 games well, he did score a, a recent winner against Barrow. He needs something from him here. Ball played in towards his feet by Spearing, but he couldn't find him. Morgan will try and bring it away. One back by Lewis. Lewis down towards Woolery. The substitutes combining. Back now towards Rydaus. Rydaus square to his right for Spearing. Dave Nugent showing him where he wanted the ball to be played. Laid back his head towards the edge of the area, and that's very optimistic from Clark, who smacked it halfway back the cow shed. And straight out of play for a goal kick. 2-1 right. Morgan. You just can't do that. Peter Clark, a lot of experience he's got as a footballer. About 38, 39 years of old. Well, he's 25 yards out there. Yes, I think you said before Jimmy scored 60-odd goals in his career, but not many from that far out. He's got great feet. 
but the just build up play was really nice you've got Nugent who's come onto the field now wants to get involved in the play as quickly as he possibly can give him the chance give him that first touch of the ball let him get involved in the play around the edge of the 18 yard box use that eight experience that he's got now that's so easy for Morecambe to defend. If that ball's just flying over the top of your crossbar, they will be rubbing their hands together saying, thank you very much, we'll just run down another minute, and you're still chasing down that equalising goal. Yeah, just nine minutes to go. There is going to be a fair bit of stoppage time at the end of this second half. Maybe five minutes, maybe more. But it is 2-1 at the moment in Morecambe's favour. And Tranmere still have had just the one attempt on target in the second half, which was the Montfey header, tipped away by Leverett. Throw taken by Ridehouse, finding Woolery. Woolery has got Lions making life difficult for him, very difficult as it turned out, though the loose ball breaks for Morris, and Tranmere can stay on the front foot, Spearing sending it wide, chipping it over the top for Ridehouse. Ridehouse getting the run on Lions, ball inside the air, it's just too high for Newton, but only just, and Gibson comes across from left back to head it away. Out for a throw, which is taken quickly by Ridehouse. Morecambe still leading 2-1. Game plan for them executed to perfection so far. Ridehouse back for Spearing. Spearing, clipping it in, right-footed over Gibson's head, over Nugent's head. And Gibson, the defender, can just watch it drift over the line and out of play for a goal kick which will be taken by Leverant away to our left hand side let me just very quickly remind you what's coming up tomorrow night it's Blackpool Oxford from Bloomfield Road Blackpool already looking home and hose but you just never know Saturday the FA Vars final Warrington Rylands against Binfield here on TalkSport 2 Sunderland Lincoln here on TalkSport 2 as well both championship playoff final semi-final second legs over on TalkSport Brentford Bournemouth from 12.30 Swansea Bar from 6.30 and then the second leg of this one Sunday lunchtime half past 12 now Cooney's gone down here again and he was caught by Danny Lloyd and a yellow card for Lloyd is the result and Cooney might need treatment he just got caught late Tramia have uh and certainly shown that the physical side of their game. <laughs> they certainly have. I mean, I think there's a sense of frustration in there as well, Jim, because they haven't got that equalising goal. They've pushed and pressed. They've had the best opportunity in the second 45 minutes, but now we're starting to see, to see yellow cards. Danny Lloyd there. I mean, Cooney's got the ball in this right-back position. The ball is in the air. He's just basically trying to clear his lines. And Lloyd just came in with the top of his studs onto the top of Cooney's foot. They're never nice, those. Morecambe worked the free kick forward quickly and uh, Mendes Gomez chasing it. Murphy was there in time. Happy to let it drift out. Out of play for another goal kick. Six and a half to go. Monte looking long. Very difficult to judge a, a straight 50-yard ball forward with the uh, the wind playing tricks. The Tramian win the second. O'Connor, his ball in, headed away by Diaraga, then by the stooping Wilding on the edge of the penalty area. Recycled well. Played over the top by Spearing, Nugent peeling away, very difficult chance off balance, and his diving header goes only about a, a foot and a half wider than the near post, but the keeper had it covered. Yeah, but it's better. Now you've got Spearing, he's played a great ball over to the left-hand side a couple of minutes ago, wonderful ball into the box, but you just need bodies in that area. You've got to get two or three midfield players, if you possibly can, running in to get on the end of these balls coming in. This time Nugent, he was drifting over to the left-hand side, had to kind of stretch his head he couldn't really head it back across goal it was a little bit too far away from him but you know you're going to get that movement for him in these final minutes just keep putting that ball in the area don't let your center forwards down give them opportunities Morgan on the front foot stopped and chasing after it can't keep it in it's gone out of play for a a throw he's got a better goal scoring record with Morecambe than he had with Tranmere a very similar number of goals uh, but they've come at a, a rate of about a goal a game better since he uh, went to Morecambe play forward by Lyons going up for it is Nugent rain intensifies again Songo headed away by Spearing brought down by Mendes Gomez just uh, drifting in towards an inside right position and going around the back of right house cross comes in Montfey knocks it away 
And then tells Spearing that he thinks he should have made a better job of blocking the cross in the first place. It's out for a Morecambe corner, which history would suggest they're going to take their time overtaking. Well, you can see that right now, Jim Carney. I think, you know, we've got a Tramia player actually putting it into the corner for him. But they're not going to rush anything now. You've got Wildig, who's just come over to this right-hand side. No rush in taking this corner whatsoever now. Will be clipping it in, right footed, swung towards the edge of the six yard box and headed away. Brought back down by Lloyd, and now Willery might be able to ride the challenge to Songo and bring it forward in the midfield. And Lyons knew the danger of letting him get too far, and he will get a yellow card. He's hurt himself actually in the process of making the challenge on Willery. And he stayed down injured, but uh, referee Drysdale leans over him and will be uh, very patient, waiting for him to get back to his feet before Ooh. producing the yellow card. And then there's just a little moment of shenanigans off the ball involving Danny Lloyd. And I think Dia Garaga. And Lloyd went across towards the assistant referee and pointed as if to say, you must have seen that. And Darren Drysdale, who didn't because he was leaning over Brad Lyons, is going to have to consult with the assistant referee in a moment to see exactly who did what to whom and what sanctions need to be taken. The assistant referee from this near touchline sprinted on the pitch to take up station on the edge of the centre circle so he could have a view of what was happening. First yellow card shown is to Lyons for that challenge, and rightly so. A challenge in which he hurt himself in the process. But now it's a question of what has to happen as a result of the subsequent skirmish. Well, the referee, uh, um, Darren Drysdale, has got to go across the linesman to have a word and just say, look, what happened there? Because Danny Lloyd was going absolutely crazy. Dear, dear Garaga, there was a coming together. We were looking at Brad Lyons, who was lay on the ground after you know, conceding that yellow card to Woolery, who looked as if he was going to break into the Morecambe half. But I'm just seeing the referee coming over now, he's having a word with with Lloyd. Well, Danny, Danny Lloyd has lost the plot. Treatment was still going on, and Lloyd picked up the Morecambe physio's bag. Stuff falling out of it on its way over, and he moved it off the pitch. He just doesn't have to get involved. He's already been booked, and I'm afraid that lacked a little bit of class. Now, Lyons is coming off towards this near touch line. And he's got a facial wound being attended to. It is one that was self-administered because it was inflicted as he fouled Kane Woolery. The referee's gone across and spoken to the assistant referee. He has produced a yellow card to Mendes Gomez. And to O'Connor, I think, as well. And to O'Connor. And Clark, who's the captain, was speaking to the referee, was acting as defence counsel for his player. But I think that is going to be it. So it's one for Mendes Gomez, one for O'Connor for the follow-up, one for Lyons for the initial incident. Danny Lloyd hasn't made any friends, but there's no further sanctions on him. And play eventually starts again. Monfe playing the ball forward. It's a diving header away. And Cole Stockton will try and pick it up on the counter-attack. Lions ready for Bushin to come back on. More contemporarily down to 10. Now up to 11. A diving cushion header by O'Connor back to his goalkeeper was well angled. Trammy will bring it forward. We've got a minute to go. But as for how much stoppage time will be added, it's anybody's guess. Six or seven would be mine. Ball towards the edge of the box. Morecambe should be able to bring it away easily enough. Songo turns it back for Gibson and the left back tries to get it forward over the top for Cole Stockton Monte's got to go through the gears because Lyons was making a good run forward there I don't think Monte realised uh, just how quickly he was gaining on him and Monte picks it up down by the corner flag and he will work it down the right hand side an opportunity for Tramier to get going again 30 seconds of normal time to go it's 2-1 Morecambe Ball play towards the edge of the penalty area. Woolery trying to cushion it off. No one could get there in a white shirt. And Songo's able to bring it away. Morecambe have defended absolutely magnificently. Resolute. Regimented. So well organised. All eyes on the fourth official. It's eight added minutes. 
Well, for those eight minutes, Jim, Tramia have basically got to keep their discipline because they've lost the plot at the moment. Three or four players are just going absolutely crazy. And you're talking about one of the substitutes. The ball just comes into the area, but it's come to nothing here. But Danny Lloyd has got to be so careful. I mean, he's on a yellow card. And you're right, you mentioned he's, he's picked up the physio's towel. He's picked up his bag, ran it across to the touchline. If Darren Drysdale has a look at that, he could have actually given a yellow card just for that instance there. I mean, he ran across to the linesman. There was that coming together with Dia Garaga. We don't know what was happening because we were looking at Brad, um, at Brad Lloyd on the floor after he'd give that foul away in the yellow card when Woolley was breaking through. Keep your discipline. Look, this is half time. I think that's one thing that the players have got to remember. And Ian Dawes has got to have a word with these players just to say, calm yourselves down. Well, it is only half time at the end of the night, and Tramia did win at Morecambe earlier this season. But Tramia playing like this is about to eliminate them from a fifth round cup tie. Ball played inside the penalty area, it's headed away by Knight Percival. Out to the Tramia right hand side for O'Connor. Little header back for Spearing. Six and a half minutes to stop his time still to go. Woolery climbing at the far post. Wins the corner. And Morecambe have another player down injured inside the box. And referee has said, get back up on your feet. And he's done exactly that straight away. Cooney, whose uh, reputation from what we've seen earlier in the second half maybe precedes him. Lloyd to take this corner. Former Stockport man to swing in it, left footed away swinger, heads go up for it, Songo got the touch, headed back into the fray again, Songo gets the touch again, got back to his feet and cleared it. Mendes Gomez couldn't quite spin away from Spearing, Lions might be able to bring it forward, Mendes Gomez has made a run forward, the ball played into him, it hit his back, but then bounced kindly for him down towards the touchline, and Keir and uh, O'Connor, I beg your pardon, covered a lot of ground from right back, down to the left hand touchline, knocks it out of play for a throw. Morecambe again managing the situation and don't get me wrong that's not a criticism I would want my players to do exactly the same but they are wasting as much time as they can get away with Cooney making his way forward will take the throw from something like the right place well it, it just it's it's something that goes on in games Jim and if, if you find yourself in the lead you try and just tick away as much time as you possibly can because you want to hang on to that lead you want to take it back to your home turf and that's what Morecambe are doing tonight. We talked about the discipline of Tranmere, but what about the discipline of Morecambe? They've stayed in their positions, they've not come out. When they've, when they've had the opportunity, yes, counter-attack and football, but it's been excellent, really excellent from Derek Adams and his team. His players deserve a lot of credit. And both sets, I have to say, I mean, they've run themselves into the ground. They must be running on empty at the moment because, no, what a, what a tie we've had for League Two. Full credit to both sets of teams. They've been absolutely fantastic. We've had some wonderful goals. And the atmosphere, again, I have to say, has been brilliant in the ground. Yes, they're upset, these Tramia uh, supporters, because they want to see the side win. But it is a spectacle. been absolutely fantastic. Stockton has stopped the ball down by the corner flag. And that is brilliant attacking hold-up play. Great strength, good awareness. Two Tramia players coming in. He was holding them both off at the same time. And he ends up winning a throw right down by the corner flag. And this is a throw that might be taken short so he can try and hold it up again. Four minutes of stoppage time to go. And then the second leg, they'll do it all again. Sunday lunchtime. That will be a game with a feisty edge to it, I can guarantee it. It'll be a good spectacle. And we've got it for you live on Talk Sport 2. 12.30 kickoff. Throw inside the penalty area from Gibson. Clark heads it away. Gibson over on the left-hand touchline battles for it again. And... Morgan win another throw. It wasn't how Lloyd saw it, but it will be a throw which Gibson will take midway inside the Tramia half. In the 95th minute, we're in eight minutes of stoppage time. We're just past the midway point of that stoppage time. May yet be more time to be added on yet. Ball headed forward down to Stockton, who's shoved his man over and it's a free kick that Tramia will take and they have the opportunity now to get it forward. But Second half, they've still only had two attempts on target. Morecambe haven't had a single shot in the second half. You could argue they simply haven't had to. Monfe, chance to bring it forward for Tramia. Ball just kisses the edge of the centre circle as his word out towards O'Connor. O'Connor for spearing. 
Spearing is 20 yards outside the penalty area. Tramia had a man over on the right. Spearing's turned the other way. I think he was quite alive to the numerical overload that they forced. Clark, high ball. Woolery tries to head it down. Is that a Tramia throw? Yes, it is. It hit Cooney. And it's the throw that Rylaus is going to come across the take, only about seven or eight yards from the corner flag. Tramia will feel that over the 90 minutes, they certainly deserve a positive result and an equaliser in the time that remains, at the very least. Rylaus is balling towards the near post. Nugent steps over it. Shot on the turn from Lloyd, screws wide. Now, that was as good a chance as they've been able to create in the last 10-15 minutes or so. 2-1 to Morecambe in the 96th minute. And they've got to keep putting this pressure on Tramia until they hear that final whistle. Because they've got to, they played it out to the left-hand side. Jay Spearing was just, he was in acres of space. He was waving his arms around, looking for a runner in front of him. Didn't want to play that diagonal pass. Maybe he's thinking about that wind swirling around a little bit. Then when they do it, it gives Morecambe the opportunity to get everybody behind the ball again. And it's so hard to break down. That pass has got to be so precise. Clearance from Leatheran. Bounces down in front of Stockton. He was uh, just helped to the ground there by Montfe. And the Tramia fans don't like it. That's the right decision. Stockton's been fantastic Hasn't he throughout does. the whole of the game. His hold-up play has been excellent. And it must be so hard playing that lone striker. When that ball comes up to you, you've got a thought process in your head of saying, right, this ball has got to stick. If it doesn't stick, Tramia are going to pick the ball up and they're going to break on us. But he's hold up play, he's ran the channels, he's held it up in the corners. He's played a great centre of all with roll tonight. Will Dig is going to take this free kick for Morecambe. Rolls it into the corner of the penalty area for Mendes Gomez. Mendes Gomez with a little reverse ball inside the penalty area. But his shirt pulling going Ooh. on. Wildig goes down. All eyes on referee Drysdale. No penalty. Wow. Spearing brings it away. I was expecting him to point to the spot, I must admit. I think you were as well, Mick. Monfe was the defender. Tramia bring it forward. Woolery pass the challenge to Dia Garaga. Can't get past Songo, who was in very strongly. Tramia bring it away again with Clark. Clark forward. We're in the eighth minute of stoppage time. This might be Tramia's last attack. They lead 2-1. Should Morgan have had a chance to make it 3-1 from the spot. Here's Morris. Morris down to the left-hand side of the penalty here for Rydhouse. Rydhouse to Lloyd. Lloyd riding the challenge of Cooney. Wins the throw. Now or never for Tramia if they're going to get an equaliser. Back for Rydhouse again. Rydhouse outside the penalty area for Lewis. Lewis laying it back to halfway. Monte forced to go back all the way back to his goalkeeper Murphy and Murphy's long left footed ball forward towards the edge of the penalty area flicked on brought down by Woolery Woolery inside the box can't get past Gibson Gibson will be able to bring it away and that should be that for Morgan the eight minutes are up and maybe just only a few more seconds to be added on Morgan maintaining possession it's worked forward and it is the shrimps that have the lead at the halfway point of this playoff semi-final. A 2-1 lead that was garnered in the first 45 minutes of the game. Fast, frantic, frenetic, hugely enjoyable for a neutral. For those with a little bit of emotional investment, I'm sure it was a tough watch and a tough listen. Tramia have never reached a playoff final when they've lost the first leg. That's what they have to try and overcome as they make the journey up to Lancashire on Sunday. Morecambe with a third straight win, their second win here at Prenton Park this season, but they will be mindful of the fact that the last time they played at home to Tramia, they lost. Rovers have to repeat that, but it's advantage Morecambe. Tramia 1, Morecambe 2 at full time in the first leg.